don't know, it just seems like there's such an opportunity for Freemasonry to try to be a unifying light or of benefit to the world. I don't know, it seems like we're dropping the ball a bit on, on all the things we could be doing. There's so many, there's so many different ways we could go with, with this particular discussion. Um, I leave it up to you. Go whichever way you want. Oh man. Oh, I'm gonna Whatever. I just want to say, I, I don't agree with anything you says in advance. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that was my line. I'm Jason Richards and I don't agree with anything I just said. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we are, we are in a time of, of division and and strife and throughout the world um you know i'm i'm in the u.s just outside of washington dc it is january 6 2021 and armed protesters stormed my capitol building 20 miles away to block uh the certification of the the core underlying principle of our national identity as, as Americans, which is the democratic process the democratic election process. Um, and there are, you know, there are folks who are saying, well, why, why isn't Freemasonry leading the charge? You know, we, we have had, um, a lot of internal countrywide strife, um, over, um, the, the targeting of people of color and the Black Lives Matter movement that, that has resulted from that. And there are, there are people who are like, well, why, why isn't Freemasonry leading the charge as, as a moral organization that, that strives to be a moral code that, that raises itself as an enlightened group of friends and brothers who are above the rest of, of the profane world, call non-Masons profanes and, and unenlightened. Why isn't Freemasonry you know, leading that charge. And I, I think there, there are a couple reasons for that. And, and first and foremost, I, I think it's that, as you and I mentioned, I think that Freemasonry and Freemasons in a lot of ways are just as divided as the world around us. You get all sorts of people in the Masonic fraternity. You get libertarians, Republicans, Democrats. And, and again, I apologize for using the U.S. references. That's, that's just kind of my, my frame of reference. But you, you get people who, who believe kind of opposite ends of the spectrum who are, who are in, um, in the fraternity. And that's, that in and of itself isn't a bad thing. That's, that's actually a very good thing because getting people uh, of differing viewpoints and dare I say diverse viewpoints and walks of life into the room together to be able to talk out their differences and find a common ground in this brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God, I think is a thing of beauty. But as a fraternity, we have lost that ability and, and the, we've lost that ability to have that constructive conversation and engage in the first three liberal arts and sciences, grammar, rhetoric, and, and logic. So I am a, I'm a moderator of a, a rather large Masonic Facebook group known as the Winding Stairs, Freemasonry group. And invariably, when somebody posts something that could be construed as political, you get 10 different brothers, at least, saying this is politics. This shouldn't be on a Facebook page. As Freemasons, we don't talk about religion. We don't talk about politics and we don't talk about borders or, or national boundaries. The third one is not nearly as well known, but definitely politics and religion. And the fact of the matter is, you know, the, at least the American founding fathers who were, who were active in the overthrow of the British government most certainly met in taverns to talk about politics. I think what we, what we as a society, at least in America, have thrown away is the ability to have constructive discourse and learn from each other instead of letting it fuel our hatred and divisiveness as a fraternity. And so where Freemasonry has dropped the ball is our, our inability and the inability of our members to come together and have a constructive exchange of ideas and learn from each other. It's it's really the 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 disappearance of the moderates and and the ability to see each other as as equals instead of going into this polarized us versus them uh, mentality. 
And so where, where I see Freemason has Freemasonry has dropped the ball has been at home with, with us and our ability to just relate to each other as, as members and brethren of the craft. Because I tell you what, if we learn to treat each other truly on the level as, as we're instructed, right. And we learn to set aside our differences and try to learn from each other and put each other in each other's shoes, that mindset will propagate outside of the walls of the fraternity. And if enough people embrace that mindset, it will grow and become infectious. And so I think Freemasonry has dropped the ball at home. And that's what I think we need to pick up in order to begin affecting change at home first, but then having that change burst through the seams and infecting the rest of the world. What about the, I, I agree completely. I thought you said you were going to disagree with everything I said. I mean, I, I'll edit this. So everything sounds like I'm this, I'm agreeing or disagreeing based on what is most beneficial to me at the moment. That's, oh, why, good. There's an, that's why there's an edit. I'm just, I'm too lazy to edit. I'm not editing anything. This is all just going up. Um, no, that's I, okay. I, that's what we do on TMR too. Yeah. Who has time to edit stuff for heaven's sakes. I'm not editing anything. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, I do. I agree. I agree with, with everything you said, but I'm also wondering when I talk about dropping the ball, um, what about more the, in a, like a, a structural or infrastructure type of way? I mean, to use one example, um, I think it's, it's uh, when people are, are scared either because they're financially insecure or they're scared of a pandemic, then they're more likely to act in perhaps irrational or just not so helpful ways. Um, even in Canada, right, but, but also in the States, there's been a lot of news coverage about um, stimulus and financial supports or lack of financial supports for people who are out of work. My guess is, and I'm not seeing the actual books for for any grand lodges but my guess is there's a lot of grand lodges right now that even if they wanted to provide assistance to membership in a coordinated way to say we know there's a pandemic a lot of you are out of work we're going to offer everybody you know benevolence to get through this time or hell we'll send out masks to everybody or we'll do any of these things that they just don't have the funds to do so because for so many years you know dues did not increase at the rate of inflation. And we're kind of in a situation where financially or just from a strength of our infrastructure, maybe we don't have the ability to help people as much as we would like. And as a result, um, people just aren't as secure. I mean, I don't know how many Masons there are in the States. In Ontario, there are 33,000 approximately. I mean, in Virginia, this. I believe there are... It's either sixteen or thirty-two thousand. I can't remember. This is bad because I'm on the I'm on the Grand Lodge membership committee, so I should know this. But uh... so I mean, imagine if at the start of this pandemic, Grand Lodge was in a position to say anybody who needs benevolence, uh, no questions asked, just send us a, a letter from your secretary. As opposed to you know, there's still benevolence, but there's hoops you got to jump through, and not everybody. If everybody asked for benevolence there would not be enough benevolence, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, I, I, the dropping the ball in terms of the, just the infrastructure of maybe not taking care of our house when we could, and now there's a crisis and we can't do all that we could otherwise. So, yeah, I mean, few things are as hot of a topic for debate as, as raising dues happens to be. Um, and so I, I really think when you look at an organization that is confronted by rapidly declining membership, inflated costs, um, inflated competition, not, not just with all of the other things that you could be involved with outside of masonry, but with Masonic organizations and dependent bodies who are all competing for the same group of dues. Uh, dues paying members at least. And the, 
the fights that that brethren will get into to keep from raising the dues by five dollars a year um I really think that that you have a number of grand lodges, you know, at least those that that don't have endowments or you know amazing buildings and benefactors like like some of the grand lodges in the U.S. But I think the majority of the grand lodges are just trying to to scrape by with with what they can, and so I, I completely agree that um, you know the. The, a lot of grand lodges, you know, might not that that might not appeal to them giving benevolence to everybody because they just can't. But then the uh, the libertarian in me says, well, why why should it be? Why should the benevolence be meted out at the grand lodge level? And why can't that be a local lodge thing? And I tell you what, on the local lodge level in the United States, I hear those great stories of a lodge that bands together and gives money to, to a brother who is, who is out of work or lost his job or um, brethren of some brethren in my lodge who went on a uh, uh, just went on, on a tear collecting personal protective equipment or PPE um, and brought you know truckloads of PPE down to our Masonic home. So at the at the local lodge level, I think that benevolence is thriving in in those those close-knit lodges who take care of their own. And